Alrighty, how's it going everybody? Zero, one of one, back again. And I'm just watching our power fly upwards. We must be in a storm. Yeah, okay. So, um, alright. So in the last episode we worked on this. We have cool little colors. You can see how much, you know, we're charging at the moment. So that's good. So this one is lower, right? So it's putting in more. This one is higher, so it's putting in less. So that's kind of cool. And overall, I'm not sure what that 41,000 is in reference to. Is that like just the total being charged right now? I don't know. Anyways, but we have uh, this cool little room now, so that's good. And it's got a little vent on the door, so it keeps the same atmosphere and stuff. Um, and let's see, and then we worked on, well, I don't know if we worked on it, but I should probably put like a little uh, thing over here too. Oh, and I suppose that doesn't need to be on right now. That's just letting me know if the power was on, so it's kind of really its only purpose. Uh, we're at 32 degrees in here, so that's good. So the cooling is happening. It's just uh, slower than I would like, but we are trying to cool a ridiculous amount of volume, so. And I was told that it's not so much the convected that's the important number, but rather the latent that is the better number. So it's 12 kilojoules, which I guess is good. I don't know. But whatever. So it's doing a thing. Um, so I guess uh, I could probably start moving some of this stuff around and then planting some more stuff. I don't know. Uh, maybe start working on our Harvey code. I have no idea. Uh, I'm going to take this tank, though, and uh, move it somewhere. So we're going to put it back into the greenhouse. Because that is where it belongs. OK. And then we'll just kind of jump up here, get in here this way, because that's going to be the easiest way to do this. Okay, how are we doing over here? Everything's still alive. Looks like everything's still alive. Uh, right, and then that needs to go there. Lovely, all right. And that's gonna fill up with 13 liters immediately. Um, I should, I think I need to move a lot more water in right now. Uh, let's see, we have no water in there right now. We took it all out. Okay, so that does not need to be on anymore. Um, let's see. And then uh, I suppose something I could do is since I no longer have need of the windows up there, I could put a bunch of solar panels up on top of here and use that for just additional, you know, power generation. Like, what else am I doing with it, right? All right, so now that we have another 13 liters in here. Uh, we're going to hop back down there and take this and transfer it over. OK. All right, and then I need to grab the, okay, are you like on there sort of? All right, so that can now go there and then I need the pump, which I thought I put somewhere. Do I have it on me? I have it on me, okay. Wait, no, I need a liquid pump. It's a volume pump. Um, where did I put the liquid pump? Because we need to charge this with like a lot, and I mean a lot of water, just to get it kind of going until it's, you know, self-sustaining. So 
Uh, we've got, at least it should be, yeah, cut off right here. So it's just this row right here that we are currently feeding. Um, let's see, and then I can take this out and do one of those things. All right. So that's that. Uh, it gives me a little bit of extra. This, grow lights, heat exchangers. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. So I need a pump. All right. All right, that is a liquid pipe valve. Um, I need an actual liquid pump. That's a regulator. Pipe valve, gas, pressure rig, digital valve. No, not here. Turbo pump for liquid. You could use that, I suppose, right? Okay, now all of the wires should already be in place, so all I should have to do is get this thing to go that way. Nope, all the way up. Here we go. Moving this as fast as I can. Does it need to be at 100? No, probably not. If I had it at 10. Ooh. It does slow down. I think it sounds like an engine, dude. I don't know, I can't tell. Maybe it's the same speed, maybe it's not, who knows. And then we've got 11 liters in there, okay. We have 1.48 liters in there. The important thing is that we have enough water in each of these, which I think we do. I don't know how long that has to be running to get all the stuff out. I mean, still moving fairly well. All right, so uh, something I should do is take a look at uh, Cows Are Evil's code for the Harveys and then see what he did and how he's checking like the age. That is, okay, whatever. Um, so I, what I can do here We'll clear this, and then we'll go in here, grab his code. Okay, so. Okay. Alias set name is R10. Define Harvey, define Trey. Okay. And then set DB setting to one. Okay. Um, and then on reset, we're gonna move SP, which is this whole, wait, SP? SP is not there. Okay, I'm not sure what SP is. Okay, so load branch named. So we're gonna load into R0 from the tray, the set name, zero mature and then minimum. What is that? Mature and then minimum, and then seeding and then harvest. Activate, mature, seeding. Hmm.
should probably drink something before I take damage. All right, we'll just leave that on there for now. Um, how are we doing over here? Still pulling out. Okay, that's fine. Okay, storm's over. I don't think it actually charges us up as much as I was hoping. That's fine. Okay, so we should be at, what, 80-something? 80 85, yeah. But, I mean, it did charge this up quite a bit, which is nice. And we're still charging, generally speaking, so we're putting more into here than we are into here, so that all seems to be good. Of course, it's, you know, sunlight, so solar panels. Let's eat first, and then drink, and then take a shower. Man, sneeze came out of nowhere. Oh. All right, so let's throw all of our stuff back on because now we should be good to go for a little bit. How's our Air. Air is... Eh, we could replace that, I suppose. And we're at 7.3 megapascals in there. And this is a Mark II? Yeah, okay. So I should probably uh, make some more fuel. So let's uh, just dump in a ridiculous amount. Why, why you don't have power? You have power. You should have power. That's going through all of this. These all have power. That all has power. This is getting fed. Oh, from over here. Okay. All right. So let's get this move down a little bit. Yeah, it should be good. Okay, so that puts us at 20 megapascals, which means we're going to need at least 40 megapascals in here. And about right there. Yep, perfect. All right, and then we'll just wait for those to equalize, and then uh, we'll keep going. All right, so... Okay, so he's pulling seeding and mature off of these things, right? So he's pulling that off of the tray, and then this mature is from what? And then... Mature and then seeding. But that's off of the tray. I didn't think it had those. Hang on. Uh, hydroponics tray. Ooh, they have wreckage in here. That's interesting. Hydroponics device. Oh, because it's the device, not the. Okay. I think that's why. Ratio of steam, combustion, total moles, water. No, oh, growth. Wait, no, mature. Oh, these are all ones or zeros. I see. And these have zero and one for a slot. Like, how does that work? Turns one if the plant is mature, zero when it isn't. Okay. Growth. There's a gro current growth state of the plant in the slot. Okay, so how do we know what the growth state is? 
Hmm. Wait, wait, did I plant put in the wrong ones here? No, I did. Okay. Hang on. Okay, so that'll be able to pull from all of these. I need more cable, so let's go and get that. Probably need a lot more cable. All right, I'm sorry it's not the most exciting uh, video right now, but it is just a lot of just running around and trying to figure stuff out. So I think I was looking at the hydroponic tray, not the hydroponic device. And there's a difference between the two. So I think that's what my issue was. Um, let's make like a hundred of these. It's probably gonna take a while. Um, how are we doing over here? I know I turned those off because we went through everything. We're back up to 65 items in here, so that's good. Um, all right, well. Let's take that out, turn that on, turn that on. Oh, nope, do not. That's why you gotta reset it, because then it has to reset all of those. So we just put a whole lot of stress in there, which means that we can't start them up anytime soon. So that's fun. I suppose I should just reset them as long as I'm here, right? All right, it's another reset. I'll just grab the first set that comes out and then we'll let the other one print out. It would be fine. Good, all right. Hmm. Just uh, thinking in my head, different ways to run the code. Okay, so that'll go there. And now, um, man, I wish I had like a better, like graphical display type thing. And all of these are kind of in the way. Well, let's let's use a bunch, right? Got to do it anyways. So these get to go up. And then we're going to need two sets of these to run all of that. Do I actually need that there? I don't know. All right. No, it's, I suppose it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so let's hop up here. It's not gonna let me get up there, okay. It's not gonna let me get anywhere in there. Well, that's no good. All right. So junction. There we go. 
Okay. And it's probably not going to let me get up in there. From down there, because I've got those walls in, in the way, so... of that is going up. Okay. Good to go. And then we need more of these to go from this side. Okay, is that all of them? And then we have power shoots. Okay. All right, so let's go back into here. I mean, the coding is simple enough. So we're loading batch name, right? So we're loading something from the Harveys that is the current set name that we have for it based on the stack here, right? So and then from that, we're gonna look up activate. And then, oh, the set name is from Wait, that's from Harvey Trey. Oh, I see why he wants the set name in here to be the same. That way he can use the same variable twice and have it refer to either the Harvey or the Trey. Okay, that makes sense. And the Trey is what we get the mature from. Um, now, what I would like to see is like the, this, I don't know, the stage maturity, I guess, and see what that's like as we go through, you know, each of the different parts and pieces. Um, so if I wanted this thing, oh, hey, um, are you still doing a thing? You are, okay, you're done, right? Let me, let me move this thing real quick. Because now that we've got that done, um, now we have to take it from there and actually pump it into all of the pipes just to make sure that we have enough in there. It's going rather slow. I wonder why. It's weird. It still hasn't like really affected, like if we're looking at the moles, right? It's about one every second. And it's still about one every second. So it doesn't even matter the speed, it still only comes out of here at a set rate, which is kind of weird. Like what's the point of having a faster, better pump if it's not gonna actually, you know, do what we need it to do? But whatever, it's fine. Um, yeah, that's the sorters. Okay. Um, hmm. Let me take. If it'll let me take it out. And also, um, there we go. Okay. 
so I don't really have to worry about anything here except getting the Harveys to either plant or unplant as necessary. Um, hmm. So I suppose naming these the same would make a certain amount of sense. And then if I'm going to do that, I might as well just run all of these off of one of these instead of each individual one. And then just use his code. But I still want to see if I can do it myself. Um, all right, so let's just do, let's see. Hydro tray potato one. I'm going to copy the space in there too. Confirm two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. Then we need to name the Harvey Potato One. So that's going to run here. And then these lights, I'm going to run in between each of these. And then that should be enough to feed both levels here, and then both levels here, and then both levels there. So it should be fine. Um, we're going to have to figure out the spacing, though. So I thought it was like 6 by 7, right? So that's 1, 2. Oh, hold on, let's count. OK, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it should be wide enough here. And I think if it's this way, that means that it's 7 this way. And then that's based off of, because this is like 2 wide, right? Or would it be 6 this way and 7 this way? I don't know. Well, it can grow here, so I'm assuming that it can grow here. But I don't know if it can grow here. I don't know. We'll just make more grow lights. It'll be fine. Um, and these are just composite walls. Okay, do I have more of those? Oh, I already placed them all out. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, well. Let's get another grow light. Um, okay, so it's got to go here. And then, let's see. So if we're on this one, we have to be here, I want to say. And then that'll be rough on this one, so then we want it to be here. And then hopefully that'll be able to reach that one. If not, we got a problem. But yeah, so we skipped two in the middle here, so the next one would actually be over here if we were to put it there. Hmm. I don't know, man. All right, let's uh, get all of this kind of set up properly, at least. Okay, I don't know if that has to continue that way, but it'll be fine, right?
There we go. So now we have all of our grow lights hooked up. And the grow lights are being controlled from down here. Yeah, that one right there. So let me see if I can rename this thing. I see housing, grow lights. There we go. All right. Um, now, I think I want to make this a bit more creative. I don't know if that's the right word to use here, but uh, I want a dial. And then this dial, I want to be set between 1 and 10. And then depending on what I set here, so max is going to be 10. Okay. Okay, I can't set a minimum though. And then I would like a console, or no, an LED, small LED, which console, okay. And then uh, as I turn the dial, I want the LED to update with the growth stage of that particular um, grower, I guess. Uh, okay, so there's our other stuff there. Uh, let's see, console, right? I think that's what I need. No, I just need one though. Thank you. Wait, yeah, that is what I need, okay. Alright, thank you much. Alright, and then also we should probably check on our stuff here. 104 and 111, okay, so I still got a little bit of balancing to go. We are charging, actually charging quite well right now. Interesting. All right. And then that under LED small, set that up there. Or would it make more sense to have it? No. Nah. Or maybe we set the dial up on top and we have this thing be right there. That might be a way to do it. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so dial up there. Console here. And then we can connect in the console. And then this can just go into there like that. All right, good to go. Then we need to set that with a screwdriver. Here we go. Max is 10. That will do a thing. Oh, wait, no, that's just pulling in data. This needs power and data. Hmm. We could just run this straight through, right? There we go. Okay, so now that has power. All right. And then I have power running through all of this as well. Not that I need it, I just need the data. But that's fine. Um, okay, so that is set to that. All right. Now, let's, um, let's clear our code. All right, so we are going to So we're going to look for the dial. So we're going to I mean, I could just tie the dial in 
hang on, to here. And then I have to name the dial. So this will be the potato dial. Dial potato, confirm. All right, and then we'll set that. Oh, uh, kind of not great. Okay, so there is the dial potato. Turn that on. All right. So, next thing. All right, clear the skin. All right, so alias dial as R0. No, sorry, D0. Um, now that should just give me a number. Okay, so now I want to load into here. So this will be growth. No, that'll be alias growth. Ooh. Um, pretty sure it's going to return an integer. So integer growth as R0. And then uh, let's see. Then I want to set. Oh, we know. I have to load that first. So we're going to load a batch from something with a name. Oh, I have to set the device hashes. Uh, okay. So hydroponics tray, which I think is where we need to grab all this from. So that'll be there. Okay. So this will be define hydro tray as that. Okay, now I need to load into int growth from device hash hide tray with the name. Logic type is going to be growth. And then batch mode isn't going to matter because we're pulling it just from a single tray. So zero is going to be the average. So just put an average, I guess. And that should work. And then we have, uh, you know, let's just confirm this real quick. Hide tray hyphen potato one. Oh. How do I tell this to integrate the dial? Hmm. That is a good question because they need to integrate the number from the dial into this. Otherwise, I'm going to have to check every single or write a code for every single um, thing in there. <sighs> okay. Uh, how might one do that? Okay, let's just confirm export that into there. That way it's stored in the chip now. And then we can go back into here. Pull this back in. Okay, let's see how he did it. Oh, okay. I see. And this is just his way of doing going through all 10, right? So this is like what I'm saying is I would have to write code for all 10. And so that's basically what he did too. Okay. So is there a way to modify strings? Like what is how do how does this game handle strings? Like I don't, I don't even know if there's anything that really messes with strings in here. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, so I understand why he did what he did now. But I'm just wondering if there's a a way to do this. These are all just branches, that's not what I'm looking for. Relative jump. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, clears the stack memory for the provided device. Hmm. Seeks directly for the provided device ID and clears the stack memory of that device. Okay, so this is like stack stuff that's new. Uh, creates a label that will be replaced throughout the program with the provided value. Creates a label that will be replaced throughout the program with the provided value. Hmm. I'm thinking there's something with that. I could be wrong though. Uh, halt and catch fire, <laughs> let's not do that. Um, relative jump to line A, jump execution, store the next line number in RA. Uh, loading a device. Well, I wonder, is the game smart enough I don't I don't know if it is. Or I don't know if the coding in here is smart enough for that. Uh peak pop push put All right, this is just a lot of, there's, there's a lot of stuff in here. Sleep, slez, that's funny, snan, <laughs> uh, square root, ss, what is that? Stores register value to device stored in a device logic slot type on device. Interesting. Okay, so here here's my thought, right? So let's uh, cancel out of this and then import back from here and that'll bring this back up. Okay, so here within this hash, we have a parentheses right here, which is what it will put anything in here into the name, right? So what I'm thinking is, and then that says potato like that, I don't know, and then dial. Does this need like an and? No? Okay, so it's not smart enough to do that. Okay. So because dial is an integer value, it could be a variable of anything. Um, what I was hoping that it would do is the hash command would take the name and just immediately combine it like name first and then followed by whatever integer comes after, whatever variable comes after and just smash it all together into a single thing. It does not do that. So, um, okay. So, man, and is this potato one or potato one? Does it matter? It is potato space one. But for some reason it didn't like that in there. Like why does it cross that out? I don't understand. Okay. So, um, 
Man, this is going to be difficult if there is no way to do this. So this is just a programmatic manipulation of a name, right? So you can change it based on like some other value that's set elsewhere. Um, rather than having to list, you know, every single possible thing that's in there and then try to find whichever one you need or proceed through the entire thing, um, which might be the easiest way to do it, to be honest, but I don't like it. Um, let's see. Because, I mean, I would have to, like, for every execution, like, for a cows are evils code, right? It has to go through every item that's in there, every single execution, which means that you're, it's doing a lot of processing, right? So I'm trying to think if there's a way to either manipulate this to be something else. Like, I don't know. Like, there isn't like a, a string operation for and, right? Where you can say this string and this string, that just puts them together into a single string. Say so take two strings and you make one. Um, that does not exist in here as far as I'm aware. Um, it's a really useful code now that I think about it. And the fact that it's not here makes things more difficult. Um, uh, I feel like, I don't know, there's, there's like no string operations here, right? Like manipulation of names for things. Cause like, imagine how much you could do if you could just like programmatically manipulate a name and then refer to that manipulated name for like your, I don't know, stuff. Cause like, think about a subroutine, right? I don't know if you guys are familiar with programming or anything, but so like a subroutine is like a set of code that is set outside of the main code. And so then what happens is you'll go through the code and then you'll have it, you'll have a command in there saying, jump to this subroutine with these variables. And then you can set those variables for whatever. And then those three variables get transferred along with, you know, I guess the pointer in the code, the pointer being like what code is being executed. And so then it jumps over to the subroutine. Um, so example, right? So this would be a subroutine out here. And then this would be, you know, the start here. And then we would jump to the start, right? So this would be like your main code, right? And then your subroutine is where and then you would have to jump uh, J-A-L or something like that. I don't know. Um, what is that actually? Jump execution to line A and store store next line number in R-A. I'm not sure what R-A is, but like you would tell this to jump to line 16, right? And then it would jump to line 16. And then there would have to be like a jump return or something. Relative jump to line A. Okay, no. Uh, return, return, no. RTN, no. But basically, um, because this is storing the next line number, which would be 10, into RA, right? So then I would need another jump in the subroutine to jump back, and it would just go to the next line. So what is. Let me see if I can find that. So it'd be in the J's. Uh, let me see, B, C, D, E, J, there we go. Uh, J, A, L, right, and then relative jump, but then how do you get back? Oh, or does that stored in register A? Jump execution to line A and store next line number in R, A? But what is what is R A? Like what is that in reference to? But anyways, like so it would store ten into the next one, right? 
And then once you're done with this, you would tell this to be RA. I don't know, like jump back to RA. And then all that would do is just jump back to whatever was stored here. And so then it would go right back to line 10. And so your subroutine exists outside of the main code. And then if this was, you know, normal coding, or whatever, you would have like variable one, comma, variable two, comma, variable three. And you could set this up basically with whatever you want. And then as soon as the subroutine hits, it carries with it variable one, variable two, and variable three. And so the, you can use these inside of this subroutine, right? And just these. And once that is done, you can return like some sort of a value or something. And then that would come back here with that value. But this coding is not set up to do that. So my ability with coding is uh, not gonna help us here. Jump execution to line A and store next line number in RA. Is that register A? So would that be just like jump to RA? Oh. Okay, so then that would be the subroutine there. All right. So then jump to wherever the subroutine is. Now you don't have to have this labeled as a subroutine because otherwise you just tell it to branch or whatever, but I mean this is just some of the stuff and then you know you can carry some stuff in here and then manipulate stuff and then bring it back there with a calculated value and then use that through the code. Uh, that way you don't have to extend your primary code like to be crazy. Um, you know, crazy long or whatever, but I don't know. But we do know that that does not work. So I have to figure out something else here. And okay, so then define creates a label that will be replaced throughout the program with the provided value. So could I define hide hydroponic tray as dial? And that would just kind of keep that in there. But then how would you bring that into here? So normally like you would hide tray would go in there or something, right? Or maybe put it outside of this? No doesn't like that either like there is no string operation here so it's like how do I manipulate a string uh, string yeah there's there's nothing in there for string um, okay any text inside will be hashed to an integer before processing uses to generate integer values for use wherever hashes are required any valid hex characters after this will be parsed together as a hex value. Okay. I mean, that's interesting. Do we have like a string value for this? Hmm. You don't, and this is just to ignore, this is for making comments, so that's not it. Um, add, no, that's for A plus B, but I can't. Would this work for strings? Probably not, right? So if I didn't add, right? Now, a plus can mean for like mathematical operations, or it could mean for string operations, which it just means take two strings and shove them together. So would that work? I have no idea. Probably not. Um, so let's get that out. So if I were to define name, I guess, as 
well, no, I would have to set that as a string and then a number. No. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, add, store this into, I don't know, like R1. And then that would be a register or a number. So if I did... I have no idea if this is even going to work. Probably not. And then dial. And then we'll call that hydroponics tray potato with a space. And then uh, let's comment this out to make sure it doesn't run. OK, and then we will set into db, which is going to be the, the actual housing itself, into setting. And I want to see if that has done anything with r1. Probably not. I'm guessing it's probably not going to do what I think it's going to do. Yeah, it doesn't like it. Incorrect variable at line 5. But yeah, so that should put something here, but I don't know if that can read a text value, or string value. But yeah, it doesn't like uh, number five here. So that doesn't work. I think that's for numbers only. Um, okay. Hmm. We can alias something. But that's not exactly the same thing. Uh, it's just to label something. Um, bitwise logical and operation on the binary representation of two values. Yeah, so it doesn't, doesn't work. Branches, tons of branches here. Is there like the move command? Is that just, is that something that I could modify, update? Yeah, I have to find it first, which is way, 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 way down here. Um, move. Okay, so register equals provided number or register value. But that isn't gonna put two strings together or two values together. Well, it, it would have to be strings. <sighs> yeah, I think the only way to do it is the way the cows are evil did it. Which kind of sucks. Round setting. Hmm. Oh, shouldn't we be pausing the game here? Um, hmm. Oh, left shifting. That's fun. That's left shifting, and we have right shifting. Huh. That could be interesting to use. If I can remember that it's in there, of course. Um, register equals zero if A is N A N, otherwise. Not sure what that means. Um, hmm. Uh, truncate. Okay, so that just makes it a whole number, so that's useful. And then yield. So no, I don't I don't think there's anything in here for messing with strings. Which means that I gotta do it the way that Cows are evil did it. I was hoping there was there would be like another way that I could do this like 
you know, in my own way, like with my own style of coding, but if there's no way to manipulate strings, then I don't think there's anything I can do here. These are just slot variables. Um, yeah, I'm not really too worried about that. And then this is, these are just variables, okay. Hmm. I mean, the only other thing that I could do would be to try to set something up with numbers and then manipulate the numbers based on the dial. Hmm. Like if I named something one, right? Like would that look up something and then I could just like check the dial. I don't know how well that would work though. Um, let's see. So if I do, I'm just trying to think of like different ways to do things. Uh, if I did it that way, I could set up a counter and then it would just count through every process or every execution, which is no better than the way that Cows are evil did, it's just a different way to do it. And there's still a lot of processing that would have to go on for that. Um, I mean, yeah, that kind of sucks. I don't know. Um, we're over an hour, so I'm gonna do a little bit more research into this, see if I can figure out some way to mess with strings with this code. Um, if I can get that done, then I can make something pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, but if there is no way to do that with the coding that's allowed in the in this game, uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna help me out. But uh, that is gonna be it for this episode. Hopefully, you guys didn't mind all of the uh, coding talk. Um, I don't know. We'll we'll figure something out. I'm not exactly sure how, but we'll figure something out. Anyways, that's all I got. Hope you guys have enjoyed, and if you did, hope you join me for the next one. But until then, have a good one.